パワープラネット TV の白石はじめです日本政府は今放射線の基準値を決める際 ICRP 国際放射線防護委員会という国際機関,機関の基準をもとにしていますこの ICRP という機関は原子力を推進している IAEA との関係が深く内部被曝についてはほとんど研究を行っていません今日のコンタクトはこの ICRP とは一線を画し内部被曝や定量被曝を中心に研究している欧州放射線リスク委員会 ECRR のクリストファー・バズビー博士のインタビューをお伝えしますでは特集の前に1週間のニュースです東京電力福島第一原子力発電所事故に関連し政府の指定している避難地域から強制的に避難した被災者だけでなく自主避難をしている住民に対しても損害賠償を支払うように求める抗議行動が7月29日文部科学省前で行われました子どもの健康被害などを懸念して福島から首都圏に避難している住民が次々にマイクを握り家族がバラバラになり経済的な負担が大きいなど悲痛な表情で訴えました原発事故の損害賠償の枠組みを議論している原子力損害賠償紛争審査会の中間指針では自主避難に対する保障について一切言及していません主催した市民団体は自主避難者が正当な賠償を受けられるよう引き続き要請を行うことにしています来年度に予定されている動物愛護管理法の改正に向けて7月30日東京都内にある文京シビックセンターで動物愛護法改正セミナーが開催されました主催したのは地球生物会議アライブ会場にはおよそ80人が集まり環境省に設置された動物愛護管理の在り方検討小委員会でどのような議論が行われているのか報告が行われました検討委員会では現在インターネットを通じたペットの販売を禁止することなどが検討されていますセミナーでは改正案に同案が盛り込まれるよう環境省が募集しているパブリックコメントを送ろうと呼びかけが行われました福島や宮城など複数の県で飼育されている肉牛がすべて出荷停止となっている中8月3日各地の畜産農家などが東京千代田区の東京電力本店前に集まり出荷の停止などで受けた被害に対する賠償を直ちに行うよう訴えました今回集まったのは福島県や茨城県群馬県などの畜産農家や米農家野菜農家などおよそ350人千葉県内の畜産農家が育てている肉牛や餌の稲わらを乗せたトラックを並べ肉牛の出荷停止による被害や風評被害などすべての被害に対して直ちに賠償するよう訴えましたた以上ニュースを3つお伝えしましまでは特集です。7月17日から21日まで来日していた欧州放射線リスク委員会のクリス・バズビー博士のインタビューをご覧いただきましょうインタビュアーはジャーナリストの松本千恵さんです欧州放射線リスク委員会のクリストファー・バズビー博士長年内部被曝や定量被曝の研究を重ねてきました今回は福島の子ども14人が放射線の低い地域での教育を求めて起こしたいわゆる福島集団疎開裁判を支援するために来日福島県内を含め4カ所で講演を行うとともに放射性物質の調査を行いました You're here in Japan this time、uh, regarding the children's、uh, lawsuit concerning children's health and safety and also demanding that the government actually evacuate all the children out of Fukushima Um, but the Japanese government has not considered、uh, the standard level or the safety, safe level of, of radiation in Japan. And, and they, they said that it's okay to, they've been saying that it's okay to, to play around in, outside. And they have, not been, they have not considered any mass evacuation out of Fukushima. What do you think about that? We do feel that the Japanese government is quite wrong, criminally wrong, in fact. N- not to organize the,、um, the evacuation of at least children and probably also adults from areas where the radiation levels are high, the, the contamination levels are high.、Mm-hmm. 
Now, with, with regard to that, the, uh, governments are never uh, a, 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 an organisation. They also con they they always consist of individuals, mm -hmm. and it's the individuals in those governments that make decisions. Um, that these decisions are wrong, and they fail to act on that, mm -hmm. then there are such things in the past as war crimes. Uh, in the case of the Second World War, of course, Hitler decided as a government, the, the National Socialist government, that they could put the Jewish people in concentration camps mm -hmm. and gas them. Mm -hmm. These were all decisions made by a government, but ultimately an individual is responsible. And, and uh, although those were considered to be war crimes, it, to my mind this is equally well a war crime, mm -hmm. although it's happened in peacetime, right. and these people who are individually responsible and can mm. be named, I mean, mm. I don't know what the names are, but mm -hmm. these people exist, uh, ultimately I think they may have to face some kind of, uh, a kind of trial that would result in, in, in them going to jail for a very mm. long time. The, J the Japanese government has adopted ICRP standard model. Um, but at the, at the same time, it hasn't actually followed or protect. Uh, it hasn't actually uh, kept the ICRP warning. Uh, you have you have criticized the ICRP model. And what what your uh, stance on that toward get the Japanese okay. government? Okay. Well, in, in a sense, that? the government has uh, remained within the constraints mm -hmm. that laid down by the ICRP because I believe that the ICRP permits uh, up to 20 millisieverts exposure in emergency situations and clearly this is an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. um, the, norm, the normal uh, uh, acceptable limit um, is, uh, is, is one millisievert but this, this is from all sources and, uh, and, and most interpretations of this, for instance in the United States and in Europe, uh, reduce that down to about 0.1 millisievert for exposure from a single source. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, whichever way you look at it, the Japanese government has permitted people already mm -hmm. to be exposed to higher levels than 1 millisievert. And mm -hmm. my own belief, having done these air filter experiments, uh, is that probably a very large number of people will have been exposed higher than 20 millisieverts mm -hmm. from internal radionuclides. Wow. Yeah. The, the Japanese government is completely out of order. Mm. Uh, in, in making the decisions that, it, that it's made. And, and, if, and as I said in the last uh, answer, if it continues now that it has this information from the ECRR model mm -hmm. and from the measurements that we've made, it, it continues to pursue this course of action, then I believe that it's acting uh, in, in some criminal sen in some sense a, a, as a criminal organization mm -hmm. and ultimately will be, will be brought to justice in some right. way. Right. You said that there is a difference between ICRP between the actual and models, yes, there, there models. is a difference, yeah. Uh, sure. Could you explain that a little bit, uh, okay. what, why it's... Uh, okay. Well, the, the first thing you have to know is that the ICRP model doesn't work. So if you predict the number of cancers after an exposure to internal radionuclides, you get the wrong answer. Well, the ICRP model uh, was set up in 1952, and DNA wasn't discovered until 1953. Mm -hmm. The ICRP uh, was, asked, uh, was set up in order to, uh, to look at the health effects of the radiation exposures from the manufacture of atom bombs. Mm -hmm. That's what it was for. That, uh, the, because after the, sec after the Second World War, there was a massive expansion in the manufacture of atom bombs, and plutonium and uranium and all these substances which were like normally not there mm -hmm. were being released all over the place. So the ICRP had to quickly figure out how to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And so the way in which they did it was, 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 was take a, a physics-based approach. So and they're mostly physicists, because it was physicists who do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And to a physicist, the, the easy, what you do is you, is you reduce everything to the simplest format right. in order to get a mathematical equation. Because you can't write down a mathematical equation about a person, it's too complicated. Mm. So what they did is they turned a person into a bag of water. And then they, they said that the exposures had to be uh, um, regulated on the basis of the amount of energy that was, w was trans transmitted into the bag of water. It's kind of simple. Right. It was very easy to do that. It's a very simple model. You, you have a bag of water in the shape of a person, you put a thermometer inside it, yeah. you fire radiation in it, and you see if the temperature goes up. Right. And that, that enables you to, 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 to define absorbed dose. All right. 
but the model actually is or uh, ICRP because it's uh, because it's promoting or uh, from their point of view th from their promoting uh, the the promoting nuclear energy nuclear uh, power well they wouldn't say no they wouldn't say that they're promoting anything they would right. say that they're an independent structure of, of scientists who independently assess the risks from radiation mm. They would never ever say that they're promoting nuclear power. Right, but that, that's it's just how it happens. It's just how it works out. This all happens behind the scenes. Mm. Actually, I mean, many of us believe that they were originally set up to promote nuclear weapons, mm. or rather, not to promote them, but to prevent people from stopping their development. That's mm. what it was about. So all those people who said, "Oh, look, you know, there's all this strontium-90 in the milk, and little Jimmy's got leukemia," mm -hmm. they could say, "Well, it's nothing to do with the nuclear weapons because we we can tell you that the doses are too low." Right. That's what it was originally about. And when the doctors started to complain about this, mm -hmm. what they did is they constrained the doctors. So in 1959, they forced the WHO to into an agreement with the IAEA, mm -hmm. whereby the IAEA was responsible for radiation and health. Mm -hmm. The International Atomic Energy Agency mm -hmm. was responsible for health. And the WHO, the World Health Organization, was, was not allowed to, to, to think about radiation. It mm. had to think about mosquitoes and, and, right. and stuff, you know, and AIDS. Mm. Yeah. So there was a quite clear distinction there. Mm. So that was almost proof, if you like, that, 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 it was, uh, that, the, that the ICRP was there to kind of like control the understanding of risk. And, th and they still are. That's still where they are. And is that why is that why the standard their model is set up not to hi, uh, look at internal radiation? Their safety level, right? Yes, sure. Not I believe so. Of course, they would never admit it. Right. I just wanted to ask you about the your past experience with testifying in court in similar cases. Uh, you said that you have testified more than forty times, maybe across the world. Yes, I've done quite a few court cases in which I've used the ECR model mm -hmm. um, to act as an expert witness for people who've been harmed by radiation mm -hmm. exposure, internal radiation. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of different examples in the United States, people who worked with radioactive substances, people who lived near a nuclear power station, uh, people who lived near a nuclear site in Los Angeles was mm -hmm. one. Um, and in the United Kingdom, I'm, I'm an expert witness on a number of court cases and tribunals relating to uh, veterans of the nuclear atomic That's testing. Right. Right. Now, all of these, what they all have in common mm -hmm. is that these people have suffered, uh, developed cancer mm -hmm. uh, or leukemia, uh, and this was following the uh, internal exposure to exactly the same sort of substances that we're talking about here right. in Japan. And in every one of those cases, uh, we have succeeded. Mm -hmm. that, and so, the, the, so if you like to see it as a sort of a boxing match or some kind of contest mm -hmm. between the ICRP and the ECRR, mm -hmm. uh, I have to say that if you put that in court mm -hmm. with, um, with a jury mm -hmm. or with an unbiased judge or mm -hmm. with a tribunal of three judges, they always find in favor of the ECRR uh, um, oh, interpretation okay. and never in favor of the ICRP. And yeah. indeed, the defense in all of these cases have, have singularly failed to bring any expert witnesses in, into court mm -hmm. to, to, um, to, uh, to testify that the ICRP model is right. Because actually it's really quite difficult to testify that it's right, right since all of the evidence shows that it's wrong. Mm. And in a court, you rely on the evidence. So mm. it's no good saying, hey, this is the ICRP and everybody believes it, and look at this guy, he's, you know, he's the head of the ICRP and isn't he important and all of mm. that stuff. Because mm. in court, that doesn't, that doesn't cut any ice, you mm. know. So if you had a chance, and if, you, if uh, the Japanese plaintiffs invited you to, oh sorry, uh, the Japanese plaintiffs. In the Koryama case. In Koryama yeah. case, they invited you over to testify, right. would you do that? Well, I would, I'm quite happy to testify and produce a report on right. this right. as an expert witness. And if I were going to testify, I would want to testify by video link. I absolutely don't want to go anywhere near this, because having seen what I've seen about the radiation levels, I, I'm too frightened mm. to go closer to uh, to this site than about 100 kilometers, and even 100 kilometers I'm not too happy about. I was in Eizu Wakabatsu, and the, the, there was sig the significant amount of radioactivity on the ground there, mm -hmm. which I didn't expect. Right. I've been quite shocked by the amount that I found here with my machinery that I brought. Right. Uh, and I noticed it this morning. I sat down in the in the hotel, and I'm looking out over Tokyo, mm -hmm. and everybody's going around their business, people with umbrellas and yeah. young women and men with all their white uh, and mm -hmm. so on. 
and it all it looks perfectly normal. Right. And at Azubakamatsu, it looks perfectly normal. Mm. Probably if you went within five kilometers of the actual accident site, it would look perfectly normal. You wouldn't see anything. Mm -hmm. But actually, what you have there is, um, is an enormous amount of radioactivity and a lot of particles floating around the place that, that can kill you. And you just right. can't see them. Right, exactly. And you don't know that they're there. Because you don't have eyesight that mm. see ra radioactivity. And unless you carry a Geiger counter, right. you can't measure it. Right. And even if you carry a Geiger counter, you can be misled by the fact that it's saying so many microsieverts per hour, mm. when in reality what mm. the problem is, is is nothing to do with the microsieverts per hour. Mm. It's the stuff that produces the microsieverts per hour that's floating about in the air. Mm. And then it goes inside you. So, so this is th th when you know this, you don't want to go very close to these places. A lot of my colleagues are dead. Right. They went to Chernobyl. We would like to ask. We would like to ask you uh, the results from your car filter experiment. Okay. Uh, just briefly mention right. that. And okay. So, so I have to say that first of all, this is quite. Um, this is just preliminary results. We have had. We've looked at five car filters, mm -hmm. uh, one of them from Chiba City and four of them from somewhere along the 100 kilometer uh, mark, mm -hmm. but one of them drove within 30 kilometers of, of the plant. Mm -hmm. um, and what they show is that all of the Fukushima ones show higher levels than the, than the Chiba City one, right. but the Chiba City one still is quite high. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and, what they c and they all contain uh, gamma emitting isotopes which are certainly from the plant. And the evidence is also that they contain uranium, but it's, mm. it's a little bit more difficult to be sure about the uranium. Mm. In addition to that, w uh, one, of the f one of the filters we tested for alpha, alpha particles, and what this shows is that they do contain alpha emitters mm. and at least one uh, alpha emitting particle, which was about 0.5 millimeter diameter. Mm -hmm. So that's what we found. We, we, we are also, of course, um, th they are still being analyzed with more sophisticated equipment to look mm -hmm. for plutonium, and we'll know about that in a couple of weeks' time. So then the question is, what does that mean? It means, basically, it means that the concentration in air of cesium-137 is about 1,000 times higher mm -hmm. than it was at the top of the nuclear t weapons testing in 1963. Wow. Okay. So that is really quite serious because mm -hmm. we know that the nuclear weapons testing in 1963 caused an increase in infant mortality and caused a cancer epidemic 20 years later. Right. But this is 1,000 times higher than that. Mm -hmm. um, and in Chiba City it was 300 times higher than that. Mm -hmm. So the ratio is about 3 to 1. Mm -hmm. Which makes me feel that probably there are significant uh, radioactive exposures to the south of Tokyo, you know, so further away mm -hmm. even. Yeah, the, the final thing that we seem to see, seems to show is that the radioactivity is is not uniformly distributed. Mm -hmm. We kind of knew that anyway, but right. this 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 confirms it. So there's some parts, some areas where it's quite high, mm -hmm. some areas where there's not very much of it. And this is exactly like Chernobyl. So mm -hmm. if you look at maps of the contamination on the ground from Chernobyl, it's rather like a leaf shape with lots mm -hmm. of lobes coming out, mm -hmm. uh, and they tend to go along river valleys. So that's what we found there. And now, so what, what, what do we do next? Right. Well, what, what has to, the number of things, but, but the first thing is that people who live in these areas where the radioactivity is, is, is high, mm -hmm. where these air concentrations are high, uh, should leave. And in particular, the children should be got out, because children are, are more, um, up to 10 times more sensitive to radiation. Right. Uh, and of course, they're not going to suddenly die, but all, this, all of this stuff's mm. going to happen sometime in the future, but mm -hmm. it certainly is going to happen. So it is, uh, it is already an assault on these people in, in a sort of legal sense, mm -hmm. and they should get, they, uh, and, but if they get out now, then it won't get any worse, right. yes? Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the government must uh, urgently overfly the area and mm -hmm. produce accurate radiation density maps, mm -hmm. which, is, which, which is old technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no problem about this. Could have done it long ago, and maybe they even have. Mm. Because the people need to have the information. Mm -hmm. uh, the information is just not there. Mm. Uh, this information has to be printed out and put on the internet, and everyone needs to know what. what so they know where they can go and where they can't, where it's going to be radioactive, where it isn't going to be radioactive. Mm -hmm. And then they can make their decision about this. Mm -hmm. 
then in my opinion areas that are contaminated at, at approximately the same level as the Chernobyl exclusion zone should be fenced off and, mm. and this is nothing to do with 30 kilometers some right. of this stuff is out at 120 kilometers mm. Mm. and if this was like your if this was poison gas mm -hmm. and it was going to kill you tomorrow people would be, be running they'd be running right. but what I'm saying is it is poison gas it's just not going to kill you tomorrow it's going to kill you like a few years, years time from. see you know, the third thing is that people who have to remain in areas of slightly lower radioactivity but which are still contaminated mm -hmm. should be compensated uh, because this is an assault. It's, it's just the same as if someone was hit on the head with a, with a log. Right. You know? uh, they've been assaulted. Some, uh, their bodies have been contaminated with material which uh, has a significant chance of killing them. Mm. And under any legal system in the world, this mm. is illegal. This mm -hmm. is against the law. So what can you do about that? Well, you, you can certainly compensate them for that and the people who should compensate them are of course the people who contaminated them mm -hmm. so the nuclear industry and also therefore the, the, comp yeah, the compensation uh, not just from the Japanese nuclear industry but also from the international nuclear industry because I see this as kind of global this is a sort of global problem right, right the, uh, the next thing you have to do is you have to with, uh, throw s as much money as the world has mm -hmm at sealing those reactors. Mm -hmm. if, it, if, you have to, if you have to mine underneath them and put concrete bases and then put a glow, dome over the top of them, and if it costs a trillion dollars, mm -hmm. then it has to be done. Right. Because this, is cut, this stuff's coming out all the time, mm -hmm. and it's going to slowly make the whole of North Japan into a radioactive wasteland, like mm -hmm. Ma Mad Max or some horror movie from the future. Mm -hmm. But not only that, it's going to get all around the globe. We picked up plutonium in England, there's plutonium in Hawaii, there's plutonium in Guam, there's mm -hmm. plutonium in, in the western part of the United States. Mm -hmm. so, so this is a global problem and it needs a global solution. So it's not enough to say, oh well it's the Japanese people's problem, you know, the tough luck and all the rest of it. It's got to be sorted out very quickly because mm. huge amounts of these radionuclides are coming out of those reactors every minute mm. and, and nothing is stopping them. Mm. So, no, yes, there was one other thing that has to be, you have to, you have to monitor the air uh, concentration of these substances. So mm. there has to be a ring, just in the United Kingdom we have but nuclear sites, we put a ring of monitors around them. Uh, the government at the moment is not publishing the concentrations of a whole range of radionuclides which are extremely serious. Mm -hmm. All they do is they go around there and they measure cesium. Strontium-90, right. tritium, plutonium, uranium. Uranium mm -hmm. we now know to be one of the most serious uh, genotoxic elements yes. you know, in this form of particles that has ever existed. Mm -hmm. In this study that I did in Fallujah, um, we found uranium in the hair of, of, the, ch of the parents mm -hmm. of the children and we found enormous levels of congenital malformation huge levels of cancer mm -hmm. as a result of exposure to uranium. It's a nightmare. Well, you I'll said that before, you said that so several lectures you've said that um, this is the Fukushima problem issue. It's something that could trigger to change the whole world and how we can change the nuclear industry of the world. And, um, and so we were wondering why you think that why you think that this Japan uh, Fukushima problem uh, or disaster yeah. can lead to change in the world stance. Okay, well the, the, the culture of the world has become complacent with regard to these sorts of science-based threats. And Fukushima, the Fukushima problem has brought everybody up short, suddenly, out of the blue. Mm. There has been this accident which, which is, has, has unimaginably serious consequences. Mm -hmm. And what, what I believe it will do is to cause everyone to start questioning scientists, mm. to start questioning experts, and to start questioning the way in which we see the world in terms of truth that's handed down by experts and expert scientists, mm -hmm. who are actually nowadays not, not even really experts and not even really scientists in the sense that I understand the scientist who is somebody who searches for the, for the truth for the sake of the truth. Mm. And what I think I've said and I, and I believe that scientists nowadays are bought and sold by big business. And so what the scientists will tell you and what the scientists will find is what big, big, big business uh, or, or even governments need in order to make money and mm. to be a competitive in a sort of market forces jungle. Mm. Uh, and so, so actually nuclear power is, an is a perfect icon for the way in which the human race has gone astray mm -hmm. with regard to the most important things that, 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 that people um, 
people need and people want. And so we, all, we are all kind of living in some sort of madhouse now where we're told what to do by scientists. And I hope, and I believe, that this Fukushima thing and, and the appallingness of it will cause everybody to sit up straight and say, we have to rethink the way in which we see the world. Mm -hmm. We have to rethink the way in which scientists work and, and how we believe them, and whether we believe them. Mm. Uh, and it, it's been coming a long time, this is not new, that, 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 that this groundswell of opinion mm. with regard to the, uh, the effects of science on, on everyday life has been growing slowly, 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 to it's got to a point now where it's almost like an explosive mass. And I will hope that this particular um, disaster, and that's partly why I'm here, because mm. it will catalyze a total reappra reappraisal of, of this area, mm. because it's not just nuclear, although mm. nuclear is a perfect example of it, and mm. it enables us to go into there and see what's happened, mm. but it also uh, covers an enormous uh, uh, set of, of problems that the human race is facing. Mobile phones, are they dangerous? Right. Genetically modified food, mm. is it dangerous? You know, is there really global warming, and if there is, what can we do about it? And in all of these areas, we rely upon when I say we don't, but, the, but, but, but governments and policy makers rely upon evidence or, and, and advice that come from scientists who study these things. Mm. And what I want to say, that my message, is that these scientists are telling lies. For whatever reason, they're telling lies. So we have to actually... We have to find a way of, of, of doing science which is value-free. Mm -hmm. And there is such a way. There is such a way. It's not impossible. So it's almost like we're, we individuals have to be aware of it, to be alert whether this information that this yeah, scientist yeah, is releasing yeah. is, whether it's true or not. We're kind of, we're, kind of on, we're, on the, we're on the, di we're on the deck of the Titanic and the mm -hmm. captain is steering according to a plan which has been given to him by people who are false and who are lying mm -hmm. and who are doing it for money. Hi, Chris Busby 博士のインタビューを聞きいただきました。あの、バズビ博士の、えー、報告や分析を聞いていますと、日本政府の行っている政策が、まあ、非常に甘いのではないかということが分かってきます。特に福島市や日本松市、郡山市など、非常にまあ放射線の高い地域で、えー、避難を含めてですね。えー、あまり対策が取られていないということで、まあ、今後ですねチェルノブイリ並みのせめて、えー、そうした対策が必要だというふうに感じました、えー、この番組は、えー、市民ができる、えー、当事者の声を伝える番組を目指していますぜひ身近な出来事や特集にしてほしいことなどファックスや、えー、メールでこちらにお送りください